Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And I'm here to bring you another live paper crafting class. Yay! It is Wednesday, April 7th at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm broadcasting to you live. And yes, I'm wearing coral. Some of you, I was watching the chat right before I got on and uh, good job Terry Hendricks and I think it was Sandy Armstrong. Good job. <laughs> And to anybody else who picked which color I was going to do. I love coral, by the way. I am. I usually like to dress to um, match the projects that I'm making, right? You guys have figured that out. Anyways, the project that I'm making, I'm actually going to show you beforehand. I'm going to show you the card beforehand so that you kind of have a concept of what we're going to be doing before we actually do it. Because it's a it's a explosion kind of looking card. Um, kind of ori origami-ish or whatever you want to call it. But um, I'm calling it the Flowering Cactus Blooming Blossom card. And I had been seeing some ideas on uh, this this type of explosion blossom on Pinterest. It was coming across my, my Pinterest feed for a while. And I'm like, I need to do that, I guess. I, that it must be calling to me. And then I thought, oh my gosh, the cactus set. It looks like a cactus flower. And so I thought I would combine it with the cactus medley, the flowering cactus medley, because that is what I'm featuring today, along with a bunch of other demonstrators who are featuring that cactus medley today. We're doing a blog hop, and it's gonna go live in about six hours from when, uh, when this started. So at five o'clock p.m. Central Time, you'll be able to click on the link that's in the description of this video and you'll visit my blog and then you can scroll down and check out the other people's names. What you do when, with a blog hop is you scroll down, you see the list of other demonstrators' names where it's indicated there and you click on their names and it's going to link to their blogs. Um, where you'll get to see even more ideas. And so I hope that you enjoy all the things that we have to share with the Flowering Cactus Medley. I'm going to show that to you also in my catalog. Um, what else do I want to tell you before we start? Trisha! Trisha's here with us. I love Trisha. She is my friend um, and my moderator. She's the one who helps me out here. So she is already commenting to give you guys hints on to how to respond, how to ask questions, um, how to tag people, how to email me. And she'll say that later on, but how to email me if you need to reach out. But yes, there's um, her to help you out. You can also look in the video description for links, um, helpful information there. The supply list is already there. And then when this blog hop um, or this blog post to the blog hop goes live, you'll be able to see photos of the project. You'll be able to see um, links to the supplies, measurements and all that sort of thing. So thank you, Trisha, for being there for us. Also, um, if you are watching and you can't comment while we're going live, just log on to your Google slash YouTube account. If you're watching after the live, comment as well. I would love to hear um, from you what you think of the card, that sort of thing. So on that note, I think what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to bring up the uh, comments from last time. Last time we had, there they are. Last time we had um, a fun um, collection of cards that we did with a kit. And this, let's do this first. Um, I'm going to show you this. So this is not necessarily, I mean, it's kind of a kit. This is what we're going to be featuring today, the Flowering Cactus Medley. Um, in our catalogs, our current catalogs, we have, this is the one that is the mini catalog. It's still good for like another three months. Um, we have kits, and then we also have um, a medley once in a while, right? So this is what I typically think of as a kit. Kits are kind of pre-constructed, pre-designed. A medley is like a compilation of products that you buy all at once. And you can get inspiration from the catalog, or if you Google um, the, the, the medley's name, or if you go on Pinterest or whatever, you can see tons of ideas of what people have created with it. But it comes um, with just the products, and then you basically put it together to make some fun stuff. It's all coordinating products. So um, I'm going to show you that real quick. Um, so this is the stamp set that you get. Let me zoom in a bit here. You're going to get the Flowering Cactus stamp set. 
and you're going to get the um, the dies, which I've placed onto a magnetic sheet here. The flowering cactus dies, you get 10 of them, and you can see that they pair up with the designs in the stamp set. So if you wanted to stamp them, you could then die cut them. It's kind of like having handy dandy punches right there. There's also some independent dies. I'm going to be using this one. This one kind of gives a, a little prickly um, cactus look like that. And then there's this one, which just kind of makes a little mark into your paper, kind of a little stitched cactusy mark. Um, so all of these here, these are called framelit kind of dies because they frame the image. So you've got a bunch of those, all of those little images here, except the shadows, you can die cut with those dies. What else do you get in the medley? You get some fun little accessories. So you get a couple rolls, a um, couple little spools here of twine, one in the coral color and one in the natural color. And then you've got some coral and some heather, um, Highland heather. There's, these are called felt little embellishments. So they're made out of felt, basically. And you just punch them out and stick them on. You want to stick them on with glue. So that is, oh, and by the way, you get way more than this. You get four times each of these sheets. So you get eight sheets, four of each color. And then you get designer paper, way more of this too. I brought out one of each of the sheets. So there's six, I think I have six in here. Yeah, six different designs and they're double-sided. So let me flip those over. So that's the other side. And one of those sheets, you can die cut images with as well. So if you wanted to take these dies and lay them over the top, run them through your machine, you can die cut out fun little already stamped colored images, right? For the designer paper, you get eight of each of the sheets. So eight times six is 48 six by six sheets. So that's an introduction to the medley. And then I was gonna share with you, oh, the card. And then we'll go on to comments from last week. Sorry, jump the gun in the comments. This is the card that we're gonna do. It looks very simple on the front. Um, it's a birthday card, but you could you know, use any sentiment from the stamp set or you could put your own in there. I've got a couple cactuses in here. And when you open it up, is that amazing? It's like the flower is blooming or the flowers. They're kind of all coming out at the same time. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I was like so excited when I saw this. It just was a perfect match. All right, let's go to the computer now. These are the comments that we have from last week. I cannot actually comment on live comments. Like I can't go in afterwards and respond to any of you, which is another reason why I love having Trisha here because she can respond to people, answer questions, um, that sort of thing. But I like to still read through them. I, I want to see what you guys all say. And um, it's fun to see when people are new to my to my lives. So thank you to those of you who tuned in for the, for the first time last week. And I love hearing where you're from. It's crazy to see from all over the world and even in my hometown, or not hometown, but home, home city, I should say. Um, it's not even a home city. We call it the Twin Cities. <laughs> it's a bunch of suburbs all together. Golden Valley. Hey, Angie. <laughs> and then um, what else? Uh, up here, we had a couple questions, so I wanted to answer those because uh, I don't know if Trisha really addressed this or not. But Alexandra said, why did she use um, early espresso for the card base and the, the ink color? And I can explain that because I really did not explain that last week. Basically, I looked at the ink color that came in that kit. And I'm going to show you all that kit. That's in this mini catalog, too. Um, I'll show you that right after. But that kit that I shared last week comes with an ink spot that's called um, Midnight, Mu uh, Midnight Muse. I hope that's right. Hang on, nope, nope, nope. I'm going to an old color, Misty Moonlight. It's a, it's a blue color, but the blue color was really only in the flower in those cards. And so I didn't wanna use that ink. So I went with some other neutral that I could find. And I felt that the copper accents looked the best with the brown rather than the black um, or with another blue or whatever. So that's why I chose the brown. 
How often do you need to replace the blade on your cutter? A few of you asked me that several times throughout, and I love to see the answers from other people. It really depends on how much you craft, um, what kind of paper you're cutting, if you're cutting high quality, if you're cutting cardstock that is really um, grainy. So you can't really answer that question. You just you just want to make sure that you have some replacement blades so that when you start to see fringes on the edges of your paper or it's not cutting as cleanly or whatever, you can replace it or you can flip it around. Um, thank you, Deb and <laughs> Pammy. I loved you guys. Um, yeah, that was funny. And uh, what else? There was... Oh, at the end, Joyce was commenting about my switcher videos. So I do have a new series of videos. You'll want to check them out, especially if you are a... Um, business owner or demonstrator, um, it may help you. Okay, let's go back to the desktop. There we go. So this is the kit that I did last time. So you can see the ink color, <laughs> misty moonlight, that's the blue. Um, there's really only the blue flowers. So that was the reason for choosing that. And what I did with that kit, what did I do? I doubled the cards in the kit. Why did I double the cards in the kit? So you wouldn't have to buy two kits and have two X, two stamp sets and two inks. And it's just, it makes, it makes it better as far as, you know, use of product. So, all right, we're ready, right? We're ready. I think we're ready. Um, I am going to cut my card base. Then I'm going to pull up the supplies here so you can quick get a good glance at them. Um, I'm using eight and a half by 11 card stuff. This is our basic white and it's our thick, so it's great for card bases. I'm gonna cut it in half at the five and a half inch mark, so I'm just coming to my trimmer at this line, and I'm gonna cut, and then I'm gonna rotate it a quarter of a turn, bring it to the four and a quarter inch mark, and I'm going to use the scoring blade. So I wanna show you something that I did on my trimmer before I score here. Let's see if I can, oh, I have to hit the, Sorry, still working on my buttons here. It's a one man show. You can see what I did to my scoring blade. I had written this in before, but I uh, it was rubbing off. So I just used a Sharpie marker and I labeled that one score so that I would know not to use the um, cutting blade when I wanted to score because that would then make me have to use another piece of paper. There's my card stuck there, but I wanna show you one other thing I did. I got smart. Remember when I was telling you last week to rotate your blade around if you tend to cut in one direction all the time? So what I did is I took that Sharpie marker and I also did a little dot on the end that I'm using the most. So I'm pushing in this direction the most. That's the way I like to go with my cutting. When that side of the blade dulls, I can flip it out, rotate it, and turn it the other direction and use the other side. So then I won't forget if I've used the other side or not. So we've got our cut and scored cardstock. Now I'm going to take, and this is the valley side, I'm going to fold it so that the mountain side of that, of that crease is on the inside. Grab my bone folder and we'll go like this. Okay, let's look at the supplies now. Yay! So for the flowering blossom, uh, blooming blossom card, Flowering Cactus Blooming Blossom card. <laughs> these are the supplies and these are the measurements, depending on if you're doing inches or centimeters. Um, I do have this sheet in a PDF that you can print when my blog post goes live. So you don't have to do a screenshot if you don't want to. You can just go ahead and uh, wait for about six hours and then print it from that actual blog post. But if you want to, do a screenshot right now. You can see all that we're going to be using. Um, uh, not a lot of supplies because the medley holds a lot. It's got a lot in there. Um, and as far as measurements, we're going to be really working on copy slash printer paper the most during this video. And it says seven pieces that are two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I'm going to show you some, some cutting tips for that before you actually do some coloring because we're going to color that. And you're gonna need two patterns of the cactus paper, but you could always change it out. There's lots of choices in the medley, so you can decide what you'd like to use. And then I've just got a couple accent colors of cardstock, which are the Mossy Meadow and the Pear Pizzazz, and that's what I'm die cutting my cactuses from. So let's move back to the table. And 
we're going to turn this around so I can grab this. Okay. How is the lighting, by the way? I hope it's okay. Because I didn't turn, I did not turn my light on that sits over my desk because sometimes I feel like it glares on my face too much. So let me know. I'm going to look for comments here. I brought in the mini boss. The mini boss. Yay. <laughs> we have the regular stamp and cut and emboss machine. And then this is the mini boss. Um, mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Let me show you the difference in the two sizes. Um, I'm going to start using the mini boss a little bit more, especially when it comes to paper pumpkin kits. We are um, kind of dwindling our punch um, offerings right now in the upcoming new catalog. And this is a pretty darn affordable uh, machine here. And if you're using smaller dies, smaller pieces of cardstock, you can totally um, justify the cost of this. I think it's $60 US. And then if you had like uh, a show or a party, you collected orders with a bunch of friends, this could be half price. You could get it at half price, or you could just get the starter kit and add it in there. And then that's the best deal ever. It comes with lots of fun little plates. So all the plates that you would need to get started, you've got your, um, well, this is your base plate, number one. And then you've got a cut, couple cutting plates. We're going to be using those. Now these two are for embossing folders. If you have the regular kind of embossing folder, which is like the thinner regular kind, you would use this one and you wouldn't use any of the, uh, I don't think you use any of the plates. Let's see here. Oh, you use one, let's see, one and three. So you use this one and you use this one. And then you put the embossing folder with the cardstock in between and you run it through. If you're using the thicker one, you're gonna use this dark one, which is thinner. So the 3D embossing plates along with number one. So one and four, and then the embossing folder. Gotta love how they label it. Everything's right on there. So we're going to die cut um, one of the dies from this set. And that was the cactus that I mentioned before. So we're going to grab that one. And we're just going to stick it onto a scrap of mossy meadow cardstock. So I've already die cut my pear pizzazz one. And now we're going to die cut this one. Lighting is great. Okay, good. I'm seeing some comments that it's just fine. Awesome. Then I'm just going to do away with that other light because it created too many shadows. So I've got my um, one and then my two, my cardstock, my dies, my die, and my two again. And then you just line it up. You make sure it's going in straight because if it goes in crooked, it can kind of scrape along the edges. And then you crank it once it's caught. Once you feel the catch there, you're going to start cranking. So I'm going to zoom in here. And we're going to start cranking it. And with the mini boss, you kind of like what I do is I kind of hold it and crank it a little bit at a time because it's hard to, unless you put your body weight right on top of it. So I crank, I crank, I crank, I crank, like that. I don't know. You'll see. It, it, when you get it, it just, it's just easy. There we go. So now we have one that's darker that's going to be in the background, and this one is going to be in the foreground. And we're not going to put it up on dimensionals, although we could, but I'm going to use the shadow stamps in the kit to create that 3D, um, that 3D look by just having one further down um, and one that that one also lighter in color. Let's move these off to the side. And let's pull in our copy paper. So now we're going to work on the copy paper. We have we have our elements for our card. Let's see here. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do the front of the card first. Let's just do that. So I'm going to take my ink pad. Um, I've got the Mossy Meadow ink for the front of the card. I'm going to grab our stamps, and we have a couple of them. These are photopolymer stamps, um, so when you stamp with them, you can see through them. I'm going to grab the birthday one. You know what? I'm going to do this one just to make something different. I know, I'm not copying the same card that's on the blog post. Silly me. I need to grab one more block. 
Let's grab a couple here. I'm rebelling. <laughs> so we've got our shadow and we've got our sentiment. So let's go ahead and stamp first. Actually, we're going to line this up and then we're going to stamp. Because if we stamp first and then we stick things down, then we know that if we make a mistake, we can always flip it over or something. <laughs> like if I made a mistake on here, in fact, you know what? I'm going to do it on purpose. How does that sound? Oh no, I made a mistake. So watch what we can do because I didn't stick anything down. This can now be on the inside of our card. Okay. So just know that, you know, stamping first is always wise. Always wise. If you can do it. So let's lay our cactuses where we want them. Kind of have to lay out our card first. Make sure that it's going to sit the way we want it to sit. I think that's where those are going to go. And then we can stamp our words like that. Now we want to stamp our shadows. So we're going to make sure that these are where they want to go. I think I'm going to bring them about that far. Scoot that out of the way. So you've got a shadow here and it's got kind of a top and a bottom look to it. I'm going to stamp it up here in the corner so you can see. Doesn't it look like this is more of the, you know, looking up and down, that's the top and that's the bottom? To me it did. So I'm going to hold it right where my die is and I'm going to pull the die away and stamp it down. So that's where that one's going to sit. And then the other one is going to go just a little bit lower and that's where that one's going to sit. Good enough, right? <laughs> Love the shadow stamps. They're fun. All right. Let's tape. So we're going to add our seal adhesive. To the back side, this is such a beautiful paper, this um, Highland Heather flower, flower looking one here. Um, I used this one on a card recently. Oh, look what I did. <laughs> We're going to try to roll that adhesive off of there. See if we can do it. Yay, we did it. Silly Rachel. Um, this purple color, I had used this on a card that I'd shared on my blog a few days ago. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's a simple, simple card. It's got three strips going down. Um, and just, I don't know. I don't know if it's just the accents on it, the embellishments or something, but it was stunning. Now here you can see there's like little tiny holes in there. We could use the seal adhesive, but you can also use this glue, which you're going to need for the flowers anyways. And you can just go real carefully um, along between, I should say, those little cuts there, like that. We'll do that on this piece first, actually, because this one has to get stuck down first. And that'll go here. And the other one right on top. Darker colors in the back because they're more shadowy. At least, in, you know, like when you're looking at artwork and pictures, um, when you're when something's further up front, this is typically what you get. But if you're looking at something like, uh, oh, a, a real far back scenery thing, then the colors tend to get lighter and lighter as they go back. Yeah, I know, it's confusing. <laughs> It depends. It depends on the sun. It depends on the sun. If the sun is going down, then they get darker and darker. I don't know. You just have to kind of uh, pay attention to whatever you're trying to create there and, and look at what a photograph would show. Okay, now we want to do this. Just kind of look at the photograph. Does it get darker? Does it get lighter? Recreate the scene. We're going to put just a little glob of this on the back side of the flower. And you can tell the back side of the flower because that's where the little knot on the stitching is is situated. Do you see how I stuck that over the top of the glue? And we're going to put that right there. There's a nice little blossom on the front of our flower. And now we're going to let this set aside to dry because we need to do 
some flower making. We need to create some blossoms. We're going to bring in some copy paper and the trimmer. And we're going to cut this sheet to eight and eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Let's zoom out a bit here. Got glue on my fingers. Eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And this strip here is actually, yeah, it's two and three quarters wide. So let's do this instead. Let's go to five and a half by eight and a quarter. Because this will take care of six of them. And then you can just take another one like that. And now you have enough pieces for your flower. We're going to brayer these. We're going to, um, we're going to, we're going to ink them up with a brayer. We have a sponge brayer, which is, by the way, retiring. So if you think that you'd like to try some of this, this would be a good tool to, to grab up before it leaves. We're going to use the Calypso Coral ink now for this. And for brayering with ink, it's pretty simple. You just go over the top like this as you're catching color. So what I'm doing is I'm running the brayer, I'm lifting it up, I'm setting it back down and inking it again. And that way I'm trying to get even amounts of ink over the whole surface. Then you just go back and forth and back and forth and I'm hardly pressing down. I'm lightly tapping so you can barely see any color going on there. Now if I were to go um, harder against it, you would start to see even more like difference and, and, and uh, lines and stuff like that. And we want a smooth transaction or transition, I should say, of color. So I'm trying not to press too hard. And now I'm going to go back and forth this way. You can see we're starting to get a little bit streaky. That's okay too. I mean, if you see a little bit of the streaking, it's totally fine because these are going to be they're, there's the way that the card ends up, you're going to have little tiny sections anyways. So we could go diagonally if we wanted, but the idea is to ink up both sides of these pieces. Now when you look at, when you look at this, we want to get um, seven of this size, right? Seven of the two and three quarter by two and three quarter. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Well, I've already sponged, sponge brayered um, this whole entire sheet so we can take and be done with that and we're just going to trim this down so we get seven pieces out of here and because it's such thin paper we're just going to layer it up like this put it together in the trimmer snip and snip. And now we have nine pieces in case we need them. Okay, so again, where'd that card go? Here it is. We're going to make a card that does this. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Okay, so we need to make some flowers now. We're going to bring in our bone folder and we're going to fold corner to corner. Gosh, I hope I'm remembering this right. And then we're going to open it up and we're going to fold corner to corner again. Okay, now that we've got some good creases going there, let's go ahead and just keep folding. So we've made kind of a little triangle here. We're going to do one more fold like this. So it's like you're folding up a napkin. And you don't have to be super accurate, but you want to be accurate enough, whatever that means. Set that aside, do the next one. So, how was everyone's Easter? <laughs> Thanks, you guys. I'm glad that this card is, um, is one that you like. Do you, did you see how, do you know what, want to know why I open it up and fold it again? I feel like it's going to get more accurate corner to corner if I open it and then fold it again. But you don't have to. I mean, you could totally go like this. Just fold it. And then fold it again. It's up to you. However you want to do it. And then fold it for that third time. 
Okay, so you're gonna, ba basically what we're doing is we're getting eight divisions in this whole piece. Do you see that? It's divided into eight pieces. So we're gonna have an eight petaled flower. Let's go like that. And one more this way. And I don't even know what it was called on Pinterest. I, I mean, it, it, it wasn't from a Stampin' Up, a fellow Stampin' Up demonstrator that I saw this. It was just one of those crafting kind of Pinterest things. And I had, I don't know, probably five little videos, quick videos showing it. So I had to keep starting and stopping and starting and stopping. And it was just amazing to me how it looked when you open it up. You want to make sure that all those folds are kind of crisp. Okay, let's do, how many do we have? Four. We need a couple more because I already have one done. I'm going quicker now. You see that? I didn't even use a bone folder on that one. <laughs> one more. And then what we want to do is we want to cut around, kind of like snowflake, um, you know, when you cut snowflakes from paper. So now do you understand the reason why we're using copy paper instead of cardstock? Because you have to really, you have to fold down several layers. There's like, there's eight layers of paper in there, right? So where do we start cutting? You've got a point in the middle. This is the middle. So watch where that ends up as I am folding this. It's right here in my hands. I'm going to cut a petal. So you're going to grab your paper snips and you're going to, and it might help to take and do kind of a little pencil thing here too, but you're going to imagine where the middle point is, which is right about there. And then you're going to do kind of an archy, arching little um, cut like this. And you want to have it deep enough. You don't want to have it shallow or it's just going to look like a big circle when you open it up. So you want to have it deep enough where you are trimming a nice size petal out. What is deep enough, Rachel? It's up to you. <laughs> it really is. It's, you know, there's really, I mean, I don't know. You could do it in so many different ways. There were different kinds of flowers that were done. You could even do points. If you wanted to do points on your flowers, you could. So... Um, but try to make all of them that you cut for one card the same. Uh, you don't want to have them end up being different. And use the same one that you're, you're using, that you did it first, kind of to become a pattern for the other ones. You can take and draw with a pencil to continue that pattern on, or you can um, just do it like this, which I feel is quicker because I want to just get this done, show it to you faster. I was gonna have I was gonna have seven of these done beforehand, and I had some technical difficulties, which was why I couldn't even chime in on the comments and say hello to people before the live started. I was having there's always something, right? <laughs> there's always something. But at least I didn't drop my water yet. <laughs> my one of my last videos, I dropped my water. I think that was on the color comparison one. And I was thanking my lucky stars for not having an open little top on that water bottle. Okay, these are all looking pretty good. I'm going to just kind of round a couple edges here that maybe looked too pointy to me. They look kind of like little ice cream cones. There's, oh, here, they look like hearts when they come together. Don't they look like hearts? Um, I'm just going to check out the one that's already done. Cut that one a little bit closer to these. Okay. So this one has some accenting on the inside. So when we open it up, and you don't have to do this to both sides, you just have to sponge both sides. You can see I did kind of like a little sponging. It's not super neat. I'll try to be neater on these other ones. But we're gonna open up each flower and we're gonna put a little bit darker color on the inside. Um, that is gonna be of course, you know, kind of it kind of gives these a feeling that it's a true flower if it has the darker darker center where it's blossoming from, right? Oh gosh, let's do that side instead because that one had a mark. <laughs> Looks like snow cone shape. I like that, Kathy. It does. 
I did have a good Easter, yes. Um, you know, of course it was home. We're still in the midst of the pandemic, so um, we stayed at home, which we actually do every year because we have travel, travel difficulties um, for Easter with family um, because it's on a Sunday and our family lives far away. Okay, we're gonna take and just do, we're gonna keep it open and we're gonna do just kind of a light touch and you're going to start to see the edges, the folded edges, uh, edge areas of this darken up a bit. We want that. And then you can get darker and darker and in the center, really make it a circular little spot. Okay. Again, it's not perfect. This one was less perfect because you can see the outline of the dauber, but um, just, just so that you're making that center look more flower like for when it opens up in the blossom on the card okay nobody's going to take and look at it in detail they're going to be so wowed by the actual um thing opening up on them they're gonna be like oh wow that's so cool so yeah this is why i wanted to have a few done beforehand because i probably could have done them a little bit prettier And this dauber is on its last leg. It has been loved so much. It's very frayed at the top here. So I keep, keep getting these little sponge bits coming off of it. That happens. By the way, daubers are staying, but sponges and the sponge brayer are leaving because we have those wonderful blending, um, blending brushes that came into our supplies um, January. You can find them in the online store. So if you know if you want to make sure that you get your hands on the sponges and sponge brayers before they're gone, it's a good idea. We're gonna close that up. And now we get to create the blossom part. In fact, I need to stick this on the inside here. And why am I not sharing this beautiful side of the paper? Because this looks like a large cactus, like up front, like the edge of the cactus. So we're gonna stick that down here. And you can see again, see it looks like it's growing on the side of the cactus. <laughs> At least that was my thinking. So we're gonna um, fold these. Now I'm trying to remember what they did here. In half, I better make sure I do this right. Oh, I know what it was. Oh, then we gotta do some cutting. Okay, so now we need to cut into each one of these so that we're removing one of the petals. Okay, just going to go in and cut right along that line, right along that line. Can we do a couple at the same time? Is Rachel that good? I'm afraid I'm going to mess up. Probably wasn't a wise idea. <laughs> we'll just do one, in the, one at a time on the rest of them. It didn't take, it wasn't that much quicker, was it? All right. Then we're gonna take that liquid glue. The liquid glue is where, where you, you really wanna use the liquid glue at this point, okay? Only liquid glue. So grab those out of there. Bring back our liquid glue. And we're gonna put just a little light amount. See, it's super light, because this is copy paper, and we're gonna connect them like that. Okay, so we're overlapping two petals and then you're going to flatten it down and there's there's a, a blossom ready okay how many of you have seen this before has anybody seen this before i would love to hear and then tell me if you've made this before because i mean i think i've seen it come across my pinterest feed before i feel like it's not a stranger but i just I don't know why. It was just like at the perfect timing for doing something with this cactus medley. By the way, you can flatten this down in any spot. Um, so as I'm putting the glue on here and I'm bringing it over like this, I just decided to have this side kind of be on the right as I flatten it. But you could have it be in the middle. You can have it be on the left. Either way, you'll be able to flatten your blossom like this. So, what did that say? 
You're the first? Really, Cheryl? No. That's the first you've seen of this, huh? Okay. I was thinking it was something, you know, kind of like that maybe kids d did in school when I used to teach or something. I don't know. I feel like it's something I missed out on and it just started seeing it or something. Anyways, well, I'm glad that you think that this is the first and I'm showing you something new. <laughs> Yay. All right. So those are all done. Now we do the glue dotting. Okay. So the glue dot, if we open this up, you can see that we have connections on petals, but they're not, they're not deep connections. Like if I can come between a few of these, you know, I can't even explain it. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you where to glue. Okay. So you're going to glue and I'm going to make sure I do this right. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So we're going to do two sides first, two sides, and we're just gluing right where the petal starts to round. So between here and here, right in that middle spot, and we're going to layer these up as if we are trying to put our flower back together. But we're not. So you know what I mean? Like an eight petal flower, like we could fit another petal right here. So you want to imagine that eight petal flower as a whole. Okay, now we're going to connect this one, this one, and this one. And put another one there. Then we're going to connect this one, this one, this one, and this one. And we're going to put a flower there and a flower here. Okay, we're still building so that we're, you know, keeping everything kind of looking the same. It's okay if it's not lined up exactly. You just want to make sure that it's, you know, good, close enough. And then we're going to do one here, here, and here. And put that one on. This is so cool, you guys. <laughs> I just can't stand it. OK. Then we use one dot of glue on each side when we put it into our card. So we're going to lay it like this. And I, ha I have it up a little higher because I wanted to have room for someone to sign the, the birthday card, right? So we're gonna position it. We're not gonna put it right smack dab in the middle. We're gonna have it a little bit higher and there's gonna be somewhat of a gap right here. Okay, about an eighth of an inch would be good probably. So we're gonna do one little glue dot. We're gonna close the card on top of it and we're gonna hold it for a minute. <laughs> How many flowers? Seven, Joan. <laughs> I don't know if Trisha can keep up with this one. This one, I, I, I hope you could. Sorry, Trisha. You're probably trying to answer questions for a, a project you might not have seen before. I don't know. Anyways, it is easy. It's super easy, Connie. You just have to remember exactly where to glue. <laughs> and there's another, there's another little glue spot right there. Put the cap on. And now we're going to close it this way and we're going to hold it for a minute it's so fun isn't it what a fun card i'm going to keep this closed in the area so that you can see it actually this should probably be on this side maybe easier to see that way and we will zoom out and then if you want to you can see both the closed and the open at the same time probably dry enough, but you do want to give it a good drying time. I'm just going to hold it there. Is that crazy? Isn't that fun, you guys? And if you have little areas that are kind of sticking in there, you know, like they're not kind of separating out, it could be that you just need to kind of pull it something or whatever, but um, let it dry completely before you really play around too much with it. You don't want it to, you know, break on you after all that time and all that work, right? So there is, there is the finished card and the open and the close of it. Isn't that just gorgeous? I love it. <laughs> Second video I've seen with this set, um, though I didn't need, thought I didn't need it, Lynn, Lynn says. 
<laughs> you know what? This cactus medley was not on my radar either. Um, this whole entire medley reminded me, I, I lived out in the high desert in California for four years. And though I loved living there, the dryness was just like, I'm from Minnesota where there's 10,000 lakes. And so it was just hard for me to imagine plants growing in dryness. And, and every once in a while, you'd see like tumbleweeds rolling across. And it, I never went out into um, the wilderness areas because there were snakes out there. And so, I don't know. I just was more apprehensive about the dry cactusy place that I lived in for four years. So um, when this medley came out, I'm like, who would want to do cactuses? But then the paper, <gasps> with the flowers. I didn't know cactuses had flowers. Like I, that's how dry the area was where I lived. I didn't go out there and explore. Maybe they did grow flowers while I was out there. <laughs> but, um, and I don't grow anything in my house cause I don't have a green thumb. But now I wanna get cactuses. They're just so pretty. The flowers on cactuses. So I fell in love with this immediately and got it and have been creating away with it. It's just, it's, it's a fun one. All right, so what do we have for prizes? Oh my gosh, did I not tell you about prizes? If you comment, you get entered into the prize drawing. So if you are new, chime out if you are new so that we can, first of all, say hello to you, but also you can get in on the prize drawing. Who knows? <laughs> I have remnants of kits that are leaving. In the main catalog, there are two kits one is a medley and one is a regular kit and i still have leftovers from them i have a ton of leftovers from the boho indigo medley and i have a good set of leftovers from the gorgeous posies kit now the gorgeous gorgeous posies kit comes with a separate stamp set so you wouldn't be getting a stamp set or inks or anything like that but you'd be getting um, a good number of pieces from that and I used other stamp sets with it to complete the cards because you really, you stamp inside these little labels here. You can stamp wherever you want. In fact, I have a video that shows how I did alternate cards with this. And I think I used a different stamp set anyways. So you could go check that out and see what I did if you're the prize winner. The medley, yes, it does. I mean, you gotta get the whole medley to get the stamp set and dies, but the paper, um, the stuff that's in the refill portions that I'm going to be divvying out and giving away as prizes is, you again, you can use it with a whole bunch of different stamp sets. So that's where those are coming from. And right now, if you're liking some of the kits that are leaving, um, let's see here. We have the Simply Citrus, which is leaving. That's got an R next to it. That's retiring. The Looking Up kit is retiring. The Gorgeous Posies kit is leaving and it's 20% off. So right now it's 2560. I don't know if it's sold out yet, but I'm just letting you know. Um, and then the Boho Indigo Medley is also retiring and the refill portion is 40% off. So there you go. So for one of the prizes, and again, if Trisha calls your name and you're one of the two winners, you get to pick from three prizes. So one of the prizes is the leftovers, and I think you can make eight cards from this. The leftovers from the Gorgeous Posy, including a bunch of ribbon. I don't even know how much ribbon is on here, but there's a ton of it. And it's really pretty ribbon. And then the twine, you get the Heather twine too. Um, the other two prizes are, and I'm gonna split these up, but I've got a ton of leftovers from the Boho Medley kit, including the ribbon, because I won't be able to use it. So. Two people will get, you know, half of this, half of that, or, or this. Does that make sense? So the prizes from last time, um, we did have the two live people that were called live, those winners, they did claim them. We have one left over, and that is for the person that I drew from the after live comments. So if you're watching this video after the live, make sure that you comment, because you get entered into that third kit option. Okay. Whatever was left over. And it looks like Trisha has drawn the live winners for today. We have Kathy Schmidt and, oh, I missed the name. There it is. Marlene N. 
So, and she has tagged both of you in the comments, so make sure that you email me so that you can pick your kit, which one you want. So the um, after live from last time, let me pull up the winner's name and we will go over to the computer so you can see. Congratulations to Jackie, and I don't know if it's Pug or Poo, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, um, but Jackie with all lowercase letters, that's how you commented and you said Jackie from Ohio. So make sure that you reach out to me so that you can get your pack of envelopes and your dimensionals that I had just shared with you here. So those are for you. They're waiting for you. You just need to reach out to me. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to set those aside. Um, what else do I want to tell you? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, there was something else. And you know what's going to happen is I'm going to shut the video off and I'm going to be like, oh, shoot, I forgot to tell him this. That's okay. I'll just tell you next week. But I am going to go live again next week on um, April 14th. That will be the day. Can you believe we're going to already be into mid-April? Wow. Time flies when you're an adult. <laughs> I think that's what it is. When you're an adult, all of a sudden time flies. Um, I couldn't wait to be an adult when I was a kid. All right, April 14th at 11 a.m. Central Time, same place on my YouTube channel. Please give me the thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial video. Make sure that you watch some past ones too and um, visit my blog. Uh, again, this post will go live at 5 p.m. Central Time, so then you can get photos of the card, um, measurements, all of that fun stuff. You can even print off what you had seen on my computer screen and then you'd have all those supplies and measurements handy right away. I haven't used any of my overlays as, as I've spoken today. <laughs> I need someone in the background who's doing all like the little technical work with my, my little app here. So visit my website at stampyardout.com. Make sure that you visit my YouTube channel. Give me the thumbs up. Click like um, if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you can too. And if Let's see here, there we go. If you need any of these products and you don't have a demonstrator or you are not a demonstrator yourself, then feel free to reach out to me. Um, I have a shop link on my blog so that you can access these products and get them. All right, I think that is it. I will let you all go. I will see you next week, hopefully. Thanks everyone. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.